Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. How you guys doing? Uh, so this is my uh, Craftsman LTV10 Vara Drive that I uh, picked up for free with my buddy uh, Pete Lombardi over in uh, Center Marichis. This has been on the back burner for a while and uh, fortunately for me I've uh, gotten all my tractors running good and uh, I only have one more left to fix and that is the DYT 4000 that has uh, two uh, busted uh, connecting rods in its uh, 25 Kohler V-twin. I'm uh, just, uh, I don't know, waiting for a good time to do it because it's still, you know, winter. So I'll probably get to it uh, in the summer or spring. My uh, Ultra Murray Garden tractor um, has sort of a leaky sump gasket, so... I might tackle that next, I'm not sure. But I gotta get this one running only because my next door neighbor says, you're never going to get that running, that's a piece of junk. And so that's enough motivation for me to try to get it running, you know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, that comes with a one piece Briggs and Stratton flow jet. Hey, it's Frank the UPS guy! What's going on, man? So my boy uh, Frank, he came by, and uh, as you guys probably know, he's helped me out on a lot of tips. You know, he drives around the neighborhood on his route, and if he sees anything on a curb or something like that that I would like, he texts me and uh, lets me know the address. I zip over there and grab it. So uh, dude's been helping me out big time for the past couple of years. He's uh, He's gotten me some good stuff. So uh, he came by and uh, to deliver something across the street, and... Um, he told me that his lawn tractor was acting up, and uh, he told me that he had a uh, Kohler, um, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but he had a Kohler engine that needed a new starter. I fortunately had a Briggs & Stratton uh, starter, and uh, he was describing it to me, and I says, dude, that a Briggs & Stratton starter is not going to fit on a Kohler. Are you sure it's a Kohler? He's like, well, that's what the shroud says. And I said, shrouds can say anything, you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, I, I gave him a starter, and he says, that's it. That's the one. I says, really? Then it's not a Kohler that you're putting it on, you know? Anyway, um, I gave him the starter. I'm not going to charge him for it. He's my boy, you know what I'm saying? He's helped me out so much. The least I can do is return a favor. Anyhow, so I gave him a starter, and uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about this uh, ancient uh, flow jet, one piece. Now, it's clean. I've cleaned it personally by myself and with a... Uh, with that ultrasonic cleaner that I don't really like. Anyhow, uh, it has a Welsh plug that's missing in here, which is the reason why it still leaks. So I decided that I would look around, and I knew that these uh, one-piece flow jets, there's no Chinese copy to them, until recently. I figured that out, that recently, the Chinese have reproduced this one-piece flow jet. Is it really expensive? It's only $25. I got this one for actually $21. So this is a new reproduction one-piece flow jet for our old Briggs & Stratton um, engine. The only thing that it doesn't come with is the fuel input. This thing right here. It doesn't come with that. I don't know why it doesn't come with that. But apparently you have to take your old one off of here and put it on the new one. I don't know why. Why can't they just make it complete and ready to go? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm pretty stoked that they do make a reproduction because years ago when you had that, the only way you can get your engine running was to rebuild it, was to clean it and rebuild this because there was no copies out there. Now that there's copies, well, we'll see if it works, but uh, take a look at it. Incidentally, my wish was always that some guy in China would make a uh, Briggs Opposed Twin Carburetor, whether it be the three-screw or the four-screw Mickey, you know? So I actually contacted a guy in China, and uh, he wanted me to send him two samples, you know, two brand new um, Opposed Twin Carburetors so that he could you know, put it to a laser or whatever, get all the measurements and uh, get the moldings ready and 
pour the metal and make the part, right? And I says, man, a brand new uh, opposed twin carburetor is going to be like $200. So you want me to buy f two of them at $400 and send it to you so that you can make it so that he can make money off of eBay and, and sell them? I said, get the hell out of here. You want to make it, you go make it. And I'll buy a whole bunch from you, and I'll sell them on eBay. You know what I mean? But uh, either way, the guy was a retard, so deal's off. I'll find somebody else to make them. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so if you could, if I could get somebody to make opposed twin carburetors, man, how how cool would that be, huh? Anyhow, uh, so I'm gonna put this on, and uh, on there. Uh, I know the engine does run because um, that old one was on there, and it it ran re well. You know, it just leak like a mother, you know? Um, this is going to be a gravity-fed thing, so I've got a Tecumseh uh, lawnmower gas tank that's going to be just gravity-fed right into the carburetor. Uh, the linkage is kind of hinky, you know? It doesn't really work right. Uh, it catches sometimes and all, but uh, I think I could try to get this thing started today and have it running uh, smooth, or hopefully smooth. So I'm going to... I'm going to right now take this fuel nozzle off here, the old one, I've already loosened it because I wanted to see if it would fit. I hope it fits. But anyway, it's just a screw and it has threads. See? I'm going to clean that up a little bit and just uh, put it in here. Ooh, fits nicely. All right. That's what I'm going to do. So I just put the uh, gas in the tank, attached it gravity fed straight to the carburetor. It was just uh, two bolts on the intake manifold right to the uh, engine um, block. I have the original gasket on there. I've got the linkage sorted out, sort of. See, it sticks a little. Closed. Open. Kind of sticks. I'm gonna try to start it now.
wouldn't stop. Uh, I didn't have the uh, I didn't have the kill wire connected, and I'm not even sure if that it, I don't think it's connected to that. So I saw something like kind of burning over here, so I had to kind of stop it. So I just yanked the uh, spark plug wire off. Um, so as you guys can see, it runs and stuff like that. But uh, oh Jesus, it started a fire. It runs and stuff. Runs pretty well actually, but throttle won't work really well either, you know. Can't really throttle up and down except manually with your hands, you know. But uh you guys saw it, the carburetor uh makes this engine runs really good. Really good, really smooth. Um while I was running this, the gas tank was like loose and falling over the place and that's not safe, you know what I mean? I'd have to try to secure this somehow. I think something like that would be okay. And then, uh, well, I think this bar here is um, for the drive, but it doesn't feel like it's connected to anything. This thing over here was, is for the PTO, I believe. And uh, I have it jacked up because I was, you know, trying to fill this tire, and I actually filled it. See, it's holding air. But as I'm spinning this, the other wheel doesn't move, which it should. Like, if I'm spinning this forward, that should be going backward, right? And vice versa. So, uh, I, I think I'm going to have a problem. Oh, wait a minute here, so. All right, that, that seems to work. See? I'm, this is going backwards, and that one's going forwards, but it seems to be really slow. If I put this forward... That one goes backwards, but not not really. I don't know why this one doesn't do it, you know? I think it has something to do with the Vara drive. I'm not really familiar with that too much, you know? But anyhow, uh, got this thing started. And uh, I'm going to try to figure out the uh, kill wire and the, and the uh, throttle linkage because it doesn't really work right. So I've got the gas tank uh, sort of squared away. I just uh, put some wire on there for now just to uh, hold it so it won't fly off. Uh, I did find the uh, ground wire to the magneto and attached it to the uh, ignition switch. Put the uh, top engine cover back on because I didn't want it to overheat while I was running. And uh, I'm going to try to figure out these, uh, the throttle now. So uh, believe it or not, this thing starts well, man. Uh, I thought it did. It's holding on to something. Yep, it's scraping something. Gotta take this mamma jamma off. The bolt for the thing that holds the dipstick. Clean this, you dipstick! Cletus, you know what you are? You're a dipstick! A 14 carat dipstick! The bolt was too long. So I took it out. Now it does not start. Perhaps the choke must be on. Ran 
out of gas. I'm not sure if it charges or not. Wasn't starting. The uh, ground wire got too close to something hot. It was grounding itself out. So now it's just hanging there. Starts up pretty well though. bolts off so it's kind of rattling but uh, anyway uh, I gotta figure out the uh, throttle linkage I gotta figure out the charging the stator see if uh, it's all uh, charging because it's throttling it it's full throttle and I can't figure out how to you know keep it at idle so I can test it I don't want the engine to blow it's at high throttle the entire time but uh, anyway this video is about uh, Replacing your super old vintage uh, one-piece flow jet from Briggs & Stratton to a Chinese copy, and it works fantastic. And it was only 21 bucks on eBay. So if you've got an old POS like, like I do, and your uh, one-piece flow jet is kaput, eh, spend 20 bucks. Get yourself a brand new carburetor. Works just great. Got the engine running well now. Just got to figure out the linkage and a uh, whole list of other stuff for my Sears Craftsman Varadrive LTV 10 uh, from 1981. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Thanks for watching, everybody. Follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. See you guys next time.